the end of the day, you are the boss. And sometimes you just have to tell them, look, this is what we're doing starting November 1. And we're going to try it for three months. If, if it falls flat, that's fine. But know that there's going to be something else that we try after that. When it comes to building a business on top of a business, what's interesting is that you love business. And so how difficult was it to make the decision to build a business on top of the business you already built? <laughs> uh, so it just, it just happened. I don't know that it was a conscious, do I want to have two, three jobs at the same time? It was, it, it really was something that I started in the office, this retainer replacement program. And I had so much success with it. And there became this demand within my patient population that I realized I was onto something special. But then I hit a wall. I hit a wall inside the practice where I realized I had bit off a, a little more than I could chew trying mm. to replace all of these retainers for my patients in-house with the current team that I had, trying to um, ship them somehow to the patients. It was running a business within a business, and that was was hurting my primary business, which is being an orthodontist. And so at some point, I realized this is so good, I can't not share it, but there's a better way to do it. And that's when I... I put my head together with people that are much smarter than myself and realize that I needed to commercialize it, create a bigger platform, share it with my colleagues, but make it easier for them than it was for me. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those things where it sounds like it was a had to be done type situation, right? Had to, had to create that in situation. Your love for business is very interesting to me as well <clears throat> because of this idea of, so many people in your uh, situation, you're not taught business in school. No one gives you all the blueprint for business. It's basically, like you said, copy and paste what the person before you did or just be stuck in the same old routines because it worked before, but not really a lot of innovation. How has your love for business helped you innovate in both of your businesses, but especially in the orthodontic space? Well, in my love for business really drives me. It drives me to understand my business better. Mm. And I really think as orthodontists, we have to get better about not just working inside of our businesses, but spending the time to work on our businesses. Um, because I love the business side, I really love reading business books and listening to business podcasts. And, um, and from that, that helps spur ideas that I can then litmus test inside my own business. So it's kind of fun. I mean, it's, it's a, a project for me and I have a business that I can, um, that I can try different things inside of, which is, is pretty rare. Really interesting. I was actually on a call earlier today with a client who, that was the fear, right? Of, oh man, but what if this happens? And what if that happens? And I was talking about how, yeah, the idea is to think of what do you want and then reverse engineer that. And of course stuff comes up, but if you know what you want and that's the ultimate goal, you'll never fail at something. You'll just learn something about what either worked or didn't work. I'm very curious then, can you give us an example of something that you've done maybe that's outside the box of your business or something that you heard from another industry or a podcast or a book that you went, oh, I want to try that in my business and see how that works. Is there anything come to mind? Oh, that happens all the time. Um, oh, so, <laughs> it drives my team crazy. I know it <laughs> drives, not excite them at all. Uh oh, um, doctor got a new book. Beware. <laughs> <laughs> from a meeting and they told me about this, but this is what we're going to do. Um, so yeah, it happens all the time. Customer service is one of those that are constantly swirling in my mind, right? What, how can we create this wow factor? What is going to make mom leave the office and go, whoa, they, they were doing this over here. This was my experience. Nothing. I can't think of a specific example there, but I can give you another, another example. So um, this year I've really worked on capturing the adults, the mm -hmm. adult population 
that comes that walks through the office, but didn't come in as a new patient. And so there are a couple things that, I, that I've been experimenting with. And um, again, I see everything as, as a mini experiment. So what I'm doing is I'm testing three different things all at the same time to see kind of what shakes out. And so because I have two treatment coordinators, I'm able to test two different theories inside the new patient exam, and then one with my clinical team members. So what I'm doing inside the new patient exams is there's a video that goes to, so the example is a mom or dad bringing their child in, their adolescent in for a new patient exam. So before the new patient exam, they get a video that's pushed to their phone that says, as a thank you for bringing Johnny in for his appointment today, we're going to um, do a quick two minute scan of your teeth and make some complimentary bleach trays for you with two bleach tubes included. And so they've been prepped that that's going to happen and they um, they know Love it's going to take a couple to get the scan. And then um, we get to scan the patient. And my treatment coordinator has been uh, taught to then say, hey, have you ever noticed whatever it is? This yeah. tooth is a little You've yeah. got a little risk on this tooth. Uh, your teeth aren't touching all the way on the left side. And that's all she yeah. says. And then she lets the parent kind of guide the conversation from there. And uh, that so far has been very successful. Oh, and I love it. Because I'm pitting my two treatment coordinators uh, against each other. So I, I will keep you posted as to which one is going to win. I'm actually going to be talking at the AAO a little bit about this. So my other nice. treatment coordinator, what she does is we have a, um, I created a sheet that talks about all of the benefits of adult orthodontic therapy. Mm. And so when the mom comes in with that treatment coordinator, my other treatment coordinator, at the end of the consultation with her child, she hands over the sheet and I think it has eight to 10 bullet points on um, on the advantages of having adult orthodontic therapy. And then um, what my insurance coordinator does is she verifies the adult benefits. And so my treatment coordinator takes that sheet, says, um, I just, I'm going to slide this in to go home with you, talks about the benefits of adult orthodontic care. Um, Dr. Jackson specializes in adult orthodontics. And this is how much uh, your in insurance uh, will cover of that care. Just let me know if you're interested in looking at that more. So uh, we'll see which one comes out as the winner. Um, and then the other thing that I'm doing with my clinical team is I've created a postcard that um, that will accompany the, the adolescent out of the office to mom. Mom can the postcard that talks about uh, the benefits of orthodontic care has a QR code with my video on it talking about the advantages of orthodontic care. And then it has reduced pricing for uh, aligner care. So there's uh, three tiers uh, of pricing. I think the top tier most expensive has 12 aligners included. Then the next one is eight. And the next, the, the lower one is four. And we'll see um, see what we get as far as feedback there. So constantly testing things inside of the practice based on where I see opportunities. Um, and also just trying to be trying to be unique with what we do. Uh, and I say unique, stealing things from other industries. Yeah, um, totally. To, to relay into our business. Listen, I think that is so wise. I used to uh, talk about this from the stage and with clients for sure when I would talk about um, Smile Direct Club, that a lot of people were like the big blue or the big purple, whatever scary thing. And I've actually went through Smile Direct Club's uh, process. I ordered their retainer or their aligners. I did the whole, I actually wore them for three months and let them mess up my teeth. And I can speak about this now. I do it publicly anyways. First of all, I'm not an orthodontist. Second of all, I am a client. And so I can say, this is what happened and this is the challenge. But what I did it for was to prove the point that that company spent millions of dollars on market research on what people would or wouldn't do and what would get them to say yes to treatment. Why would we as a industry not utilize that and duplicate it in the way that we can? So I love that you are rinse and repeating or finding stuff that's unique and different in the in the practice. The bleach trays for while you wait for your the adult patients or for the parents is it works on so many levels when it comes to influence, the law of reciprocity, the surprise, they're not expecting it, all of that. Plus, it, they leave there 
with something that they can say no other office did for them. It's set you apart from everybody else. And I love that you're willing to try things. I think a lot of times it's it's hard for business owners to try new things, worried about what if it fails instead of, well, what if it succeeds? Like, what if this is the thing that separates us? So I love that you're doing, I love that you're doing competition against the two TCs to figure out like who's going to get involved. And, and by the way, I, I think that there's this misconception that sometimes we can't ask our sales people, our TCs to do something new and different and unique because that's not the way it's always been done. But this gives them a variety to be able to play with and try new things and see what works and make everybody's life easier. And in our industry or in a industry right now, in the world right now, you need to find what is going to be that edge, that cutting edge that's going to give you all the difference when it comes to the competition that's out there. So I love that you're doing stuff like that. What I has... agree. Good. And I appreciate that. And I'll just say for all the orthodontists out there that um, my treatment coordinators, every anybody in my office, every time I ask them to do anything new and different, they do not, there is a lot of resistance. And so sometimes it oh, takes- Oh, good. I'm so glad you said that. Me presenting the idea and then them reminding them that I presented the idea. Uh, what I've learned through the years that I think is really important is to give them choices. Mm. So I'm thinking about doing either this or doing this. You tell me which you think would work better. Um, it's helpful if they have buy-in. At the end of the day, you are the boss. And sometimes you just have to tell them, look, this is what we're doing starting November 1. And we're going to try it for three months. If, if it falls flat, that's fine. But know that there's going to be something else that we try after that. Listen, I'm so glad you said that because I know there are people listening in their car on the treadmill, right? It's like, well, you must have really people who agree with you on everything and must be nice to have that TC. And as opposed to, no, and they, I, they still give the pushback. They still get it. But as you said, at the end of the day, we need to, this is why we're doing it. Give them the vision, the idea, the focus, give them the timeline, get your best effort in there. And what happens most of the time, something ends up being the way we always do it instead of, uh, this is so hard and this is so challenging. And I love that you're, well, I actually want to ask you this. <clears throat> do you have something like that, that you've tried over the years that failed miserably, but you learned something really powerful about it? Hey, there's no reason to learn how to own your role on your own. If you like that clip, go ahead and click right here for another one. Or if you want to watch the entire podcast, go ahead and click right here. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.